All right, hi everyone. Welcome back to another video. Today we're taking a look at the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion Remastered on the Steam Deck. Now, I just finished a 1 hour and 20 minute stream for the first time. This video specifically is going to be best settings or recommended settings for various use cases uh, for Oblivion Remastered on the Steam Deck. Um, now, you do have a lot of settings to work with and uh, after testing it for a couple of hours, I've pretty much narrowed it down to some settings that I think were pretty uh, okay-ish and they keep the fidelity at somewhat decent level while still trying to maintain at least 30 or 28 to 30 FPS. So, the first option that uh, I am going to give you guys is 30 FPS with medium settings with some settings on low uh, but this will have some dips. This can actually improve the more you play the game, the more shaders are loaded. So it will be an option where most of the time it will be 30 FPS, but you will see some dips to 20 or even 15. Uh, so to achieve this, the options that I have chosen are, first of all, limited to 30 FPS. Now motion blur has to be off. Screen space reflections have to be off. Now I've set view distance quality to medium and effects quality to low, footage quality to medium. Now, view distance quality and footage quality, this is a preference. If you don't want to have view distance uh, at medium, you can lower it, but these are settings that do not have that big of an impact on the performance. Now, the settings that have the biggest impact on performance will be shadows, global illumination, effects, and uh, post-processing. This will be one of the the biggest ones that you can change and immediately see the FPS go up or down depending on, on uh, what you choose. Uh, so back to the settings, I have decided to go with view distance quality set to medium, foliage quality set to medium, effects quality set to low, shadow quality set to low, global illumination quality set to low, texture quality set to medium, reflection quality set to medium, and post-processing quality set to low. Now, hair quality and cloud quality, this can really depend. If you prefer to play in third person, it will have a bigger impact on your performance, but if you play in first person, uh, it will run a little bit better, just because you don't get to experience that hair and cloud uh, too often, unless you're looking at other characters. Now, for upscaling, I've chosen XCSS set to balanced, I've gone with XCSS because the FSR ghosting is a little bit too much. Uh, there is some ghosting with XCSS as well, but it is far more stable than uh, the FSR counterpart. Between balanced and quality, you will notice some difference. You can set it to quality and you might lose one or two FPS. So these are my recommended settings to try and get to 30 fps but with some dips down to 28 or 29. now if you're looking to get the best battery life out of this my recommendation is to just simply set everything to the lowest now by default there are three or four quality levels it goes down to low but you can actually go down to lowest so set everything to lowest and you can set xcss to auto performance cap it to 30 fps it's gonna look like potato uh, but it will get you to about three hours and 30 minutes of battery life which is about 30 minutes more than what you would usually get with the other settings so if you stretch for battery life this is an option it's not gonna look great and it will still dip below 30 at some points uh, but it will get you 30 minutes more on the oled and about 15 to 20 minutes more on the lcd now, if you're trying to get the maximum FPS out of the game, you can also try frame generation. Now, frame generation is only available if you're using FSR. And here we are playing with the lowest possible settings and frame generation turned on and FSR set to balanced. You can see the ghosting when I move the axe. And with this much frame rate now, Without frame generation, you're getting around 28 to the FPS. And with frame generation, that's up to about 40. You can definitely feel a lot of input lag because you're not getting enough frames. So I would definitely not recommend this option. It's not the worst out there, but it's also not the best. So definitely you can experiment with frame generation, but I think you'll be able to tell that it's not the best option uh, just because of the input lag. So 
if you're after a lot of FPS, you can set it to uncapped and on the lowest possible settings, you get around 35, sometimes even 40 FPS, even without frame generation, but 30 to 35 is more realistic. So to sum it all up, I would suggest just sticking with medium to low settings, shadow quality, global illumination, post-processing set to low, everything else to medium, and you will get 30 FPS most of the time. There will be some dips, but you get 30 FPS most of the time. And battery life on the OLED will be about two and a half hours. On the LCD is going to be about one and a half hours with these settings. And uh, you're going to have a pretty good time with the game. There will be some more improvement as you play along. Shaders will load better, so there's not going to be as much stuttering. And hopefully with some more uh, patches, they will be able to improve and stabilize the performance so that we can get stable 30. That's gonna be it for the video. Thank you guys for watching. If you wanna see how the game runs at all the different settings, you can check out the live stream that I did. Uh, I am gonna link to it below in the description. Uh, but that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.